We've stolen Tim Leak from RPA for a few minutes. We got to sit down. We're going to talk about some hot industry topics, some buzzwords, some fun things. So I love buzzwords. I know, right? I mean, they make our industry go round. <laughs> uh, so, so let's start um, with a buzzword or a term that maybe has a, a no definition or very vague definition. So I'd love to get your thoughts oh. on cultural relevance. <laughs> it's a, a term that gets thrown around a lot. Seems to matter differently and mean different things to different marketers. What does cultural relevance really mean to you and, and how can brands capture that? It, the, uh, the first thing is easy. Like, what does it mean? I think it just means that it matters. Like the, the biggest challenge with marketing in general is to make it matter. We, we care about our products and we care about what we're talking about, but real people don't care about that. So how do you make it matter if you can connect it to something that they do care about? culture or be part of that culture, or create culture that they care about, then that matters. How do you do it? That's a lot harder uh, because it's very difficult if you're a cheese brand or something like that to do something that is culturally relevant in a in an authentic and true way. Authentic Authenticity is also a buzzword. Yes. <laughs> We're going to buzzword bingo. <laughs> yeah. So again, authenticity, key for Brand for cultural relevance, yeah. How Brand relevance doesn't have to be authentic. You just have to be useful or valuable, right? Because if I, for cheese, I work on no cheese brands. I just picked one randomly. But, you know, if it's something like that, if, if, it's, if it serves my need, if I like the flavor of it, then it works. I don't need it to be culturally relevant, right? But, but a lot of times, you know, the soft drink wars or whatever, you know, the cultural relevancy matters more because Pepsi and Coke taste pretty close to one another. So you're buying it for other reasons. And, and that's what you're trying to connect with. One of the other big topics we talk about with the community uh, is talent, right? So in terms of bringing on the right people, building the right marketing organization, but there's a flip side to it, which is as senior leaders in the industry, how do you manage up to the CMOs or CEOs or the boards and the presidents? Uh, we talked about it a lot uh, during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, now we are marketing through economic uncertainty, whatever that means. And uh, those conversations where you're uh, conveying the importance and the power of the work that we're doing uh, and, and making sure that it's understood as a profit driver, not a cost center, right? It becomes that much more important. So mm -hmm. do you have any thoughts or in advice or input you could share on how to best tell those stories when you are talking to the CEOs and the boards? With the, the name of brand innovators, right? When you talk about innovation, I often say innovation isn't actually a thing you do. Almost every other role is. Like you write, or you market or you do data analytics. Like it's a thing you can do. You can't really do innovation. You can only inspire innovation. Everybody else has to do it because it affects every single group, every single uh, discipline uh, across the board. And so there isn't like, I know people think it's like sticky notes or something like that, but it, there, you have to just inspire that sort of change. So managing up is very much a, a key part of it. And I think it's a, a I think probably a lot of leaders have gotten to where they are because they are good at managing up. It's a, a key skill set that I think uh, I, I certainly developed it early. And I, I think a lot I've seen a lot of other people that did that. And it, it's really just about not trying to tell anybody what to do, but inspiring that way forward about look at what's possible and look, look at, at this and, and offering your your wisdom, your point of view, that, that sort of thing, and be, being that advisor for the people above you, because that's what they're hoping for. They want you to make their lives easier, not harder. And certainly when it comes to innovation, a lot of times if we're saying, hey, the way we've been doing it, that's not working anymore. We need to do it this way. Nobody likes that because that's change and change is fundamentally frustrating to everybody. It is. Change is scary. Yeah. Right. So I like that. So uh, now we're going to segue into the lightning round. Um, so I'll give you kind of four four prompts. Uh, we're going to talk about a challenge that you're thinking about for the coming year, maybe something for you specifically within your role or something that the marketing industry is, is facing as a whole. Uh, a trend maybe that you're excited about that we didn't cover. Uh, and then you will get your two cents on some of the, the hottest buzzwords uh, of the marketing industry today. Cool. All right. Okay. So let's start with, with challenges, right? Uh, there are lots of challenges and they often can become opportunities if you think about them the right way. But what are some of or one of the biggest challenges you feel like the marketing industry is facing going into 2023? I still think speed is, is one of the, the key things. Uh, 
there's always, similar to what I said earlier about people pushing back against change, people push back against needing to move quickly because there are a lot of reasons why people don't like it. They aren't comfortable with it. They're worried they're going to make a, a poor decision. Uh, it's not the way we did it before. All that, all that sort of stuff. But, but fundamentally, you're going to have a competitive advantage if you can move faster than everybody else. And the pace of change in general is not slowing down. It's uh, it, always say, I've been saying it for 15 years that this is the slowest change is ever going to be in our lifetime again. Still true, and it's even faster all the time. And so being able to keep up with that, whether that speed is adapting, whether it's writing, whether it's making decisions, uh, all of that stuff is key. And as things get more complex, finding ways to actually simplify that and make decisions, informed decisions, faster is going to be key. So that's the that's the big challenge just because it's not, it's so much easier said than done. Absolutely. And we talked about cultural relevance earlier. Uh, I mean, speed is such a key, yeah. uh, right? Because those cultural moments go by so fast yeah. that if you move too slowly. If you're doing like a corn kid TikTok today, it's you, you missed that boat. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's a big lump with knobs, right? <laughs> you know, so uh, exactly. So let's talk about trends. There's no shortage of trends that people are talking about, buzzwords that people are talking about. Some maybe have more substance or relevance than others. Uh, are there any in industry trends or, or those hot topics that you feel are particularly relevant or worth paying attention to uh, as you're thinking about the coming year? I, we're going to talk about AI in a second, I think. So I'm going to, I'll actually table that one, although that's going to be a big thing, especially sort of on the creative side of the industry. I'm actually going to say uh, customer experience because it's been around for a while. So I don't know how tre trendy it is, but I think uh, the last week has made it even more crystal clear. If you see issues happening, say with airlines, and uh, the experience is not good, no amount of of funny or beautiful or poetic brand advertising is going to change people's minds. So I actually think CX uh, experience is really the future of brand marketing. Uh, and communication messages will be part of that. Your experience on the website will be part of that. Your experience with people at the counter will be part of that. So I, I think that's, because uh, I don't know if trend is quite the right word because it's broader than that. But to my mind, that's about the easiest way to crystallize what is the most important stuff to be paying attention to. I'm not the one being interviewed, but I will add to that and say, you know, we talk a lot about like generational marketing and especially younger consumers, millennials, Gen Z, now Gen Alpha, they see through advertising, yeah. right? They see through the marketing. So really the experience is become so much more important yeah. to them because that's what's going to determine if they invest themselves in your brand or not is the experience that they have with you right and, so. and it inspires so much more right if you have that experience and it's good you're going to tell me about it i'll tell you about it we share that all that sort of stuff and and we'll share that on social platforms and it gets amplified from there and or it can spark something else potentially even a culturally relevant moment off of it i just think it all begins with that. And the more we can influence that every step of the way, that's going to be better. We'll talk about AI first, since you mentioned it already. Uh, again, machine learning, AI, it's not brand new, but we're seeing it at an entirely new level recently. The last two months, yeah. What do you see, if any, as its role within marketing and what we do? Oh, it's definitely going to have a role <laughs> within marketing. Uh, it, it goes back to what I said about speed earlier, too. I, there's a lot of fear about it. There's always fear when something new comes out, especially when it's this disruptive, and it will be disruptive. Uh, but whenever something new comes out, what we have to do is figure out not just like what to do with it, but how, how to change the way we work, right? So we have to think about new ways of using this as part of our toolkit, the same way however many years ago we started using Photoshop instead of uh, paste up people in an art studio. And it's, it's just that, but it's happening at a bigger scale. It's not going to completely replace writers, but it will be it will help them work faster. It will replace the stuff they didn't really like doing that much anyway. And it, and it makes things easier. And so it can help us get to an end product faster. We can use it for brainstorming. We can use it for shortcuts. There may be things that we don't need to outsource to anybody because you could have an assistant simply enter in the prompts and then somebody review it. Uh, from a creative side of the industry, it's going to turn even the most junior creatives 
they have to think like creative leaders. They actually have to look at whatever the AI delivers back and then make judgment calls and edit it as opposed to the way it's always worked is they're the ones generating that first draft and the creative directors are the ones having the leadership point of view. And I actually think that's going to result in stronger leaders. They're going to have to develop a critical sense of what's right and where it could go and how to push it. And I think it's going to raise the creative bar because mediocre just just got robotized, roboticized. I don't know what the word is, but you know, it's automated. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like Porky Pig there, robot, 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 automated. The, and so, you know, mediocre is going to be easy, but that's going to have massive impacts through everything. I also think there's a lot of, um, if you look at ChatGPT specifically and how that might affect Google and everything like that, they're going to have their own competitor, of course, but there's, so much when I Google something now, the answer I get is usually on some sort of landing page somebody built so that they could put ads all over it. And a lot of our money is going towards ads placements on things where, where people weren't really engaged. It's actually annoying. You, you make me go through three pages and click next page before I ever get the answer to what temperature should my chicken be on the grill. And ChatGPT just tells you. That's going to change that game. So I think we won't be able to like game the system from an SEO perspective and everything like that. And that means that all of that ad inventory that's going to those sort of crappy placements, that's my own point of view on them, uh, that's going to go. And I think ultimately we'll end up with better quality and, and a higher creative bar. Well, that is fascinating. I did not think necessarily about that potential impact. Uh, but certainly reminds me a little bit of like uh, Wolfram Alpha back in the day where you can get very specific information response to queries, yeah. right? That wasn't having to sift through it or look through low quality sites that were basically built yes. as a response not to the, answer the question, but to pop up as a search result. Tell it to me in two sentences or less. Tell me five words or less or five paragraphs and it gives it to you that way. That's amazing. It is. All right. Last question, another, the other, <laughs> if you will, buzziest of buzzwords and topics uh, is the metaverse and, and Web3 in general, and, and certainly something that's been top of mind. There's been a lot of really interesting experiments, let's call them, and first movers, but uh, as far as meaningfully or substantively impacting our industry, uh, where do you see those potential applications uh, today, tomorrow, if ever? What does the metaverse do for, for advertising? It's, it's, I do think it's a little overblown, uh, Web3 and the metaverse and all that stuff. And I, I, I love my Oculus. We still call it the Oculus. I think it's a Quest 2. Uh, but I, you know, I, I love virtual reality, but I am not of the generation that wants to sit there and talk to other random people within it. My kids do while they're playing games in the metaverse, but it's really just an, a new variation of interacting online. They did that when they were just playing on their computers as well. It, it's not really different. They just have a headset on. Um, th that said, there are experiences that are being built in these communities. So if you're in Roblox or if you're in Fortnite or, or, or something, which are, for me, Roblox is like probably the best example of a real metaverse right now where the people are there and they can interact with other, other things. And I think there's going to be an opportunity for brands to create experiences and potentially in a culturally relevant way. It depends whether it's actually cool. Like it might actually be cool to go visit a pizza hut or something like that in Roblox, but if it's trying too hard, it's, it's not. And if it feels too much like advertising, it won't work. So th that's, that's going to be the practical aspect. A and then maybe there'll be more of a slap your ad into the environment thing. You know, there's just going to be outdoor boards that exist within that thing. I could see that sort of thing happening too. It, it, you know, beyond that, you, we still have to get more people with headsets before we're going to see that tipping point. And, and I think uh, AI is going to have a bigger impact on everything we do more than the metaverse will. But I think VR is cool. I mean, you know, I watched VR Troopers as a kid waiting for this day, right? Uh, it's here, you know, finally. It's here. Well, I love it. Thank you so much. Thanks.